Kicking the can for tomorrow I don't like because you think the problems that you create, the next generation should suffer. Hello? I don't like this. Better face it now, this is the reality. The only and only thing I'm telling you, it doesn't matter, this is not some rocket science. The only and only thing the land needs is, it needs vegetation and it needs animals. That's all it needs. Now, I love to cook and I know one thing about rice. I am a good cook. Well, you can… we can have a cook-off. <laughs> not, 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 not a competition, just <laughs> an enrichment, yes. an enrichment experience. Yes. Now, one of the processes of cooking rice, unless you want extremely sticky rice, is to wash the heck out of it um, to ensure those starches come out. But my question is from an end, and I'd ask you as well to share, what on an individual level can we do about water wastage? See, uh, because uh, the urban populations always have access to media, social media, they dominate everything. Mm but they are not the majority of the population. I'm saying this because it's like this. Most people who have seen older generation of people who have seen Indian movies, they will see the village women are carrying a pot and walking to the river or lake and walking and there the hero goes and romances them, they sing a song, everything. But for the actor, she's carrying an empty pot. The real woman is carrying fifteen kilograms on her head. Yes, there is no romance there, she cannot open her mouth and sing <laughs> What I'm saying is the crisis has been long coming. We thought it's romantic when it happens to somebody else. But now you have to take your pot and go in Chennai city to get water, now it's looking like a disaster. Hello? Mm -hmm. This was happening everywhere in the villages. So what can we do? There are many things we can do. Of course, everybody is talking about uh, drink only two liters of water, have bath only with four liters of water, uh, all this. I will not say such things to anybody. Mm -hmm. I would just say, just be conscious, just be conscious, water is not a commodity, nor food is a commodity. This… these are life-making material. Hello? Hello? Seventy percent of you is water, this is you. How come when it's here, you don't care? The moment it comes here, it means so much. You just be conscious, this is life. This is life-making material. If you're conscious of this, I know according to your intelligence, your life situations, you'll do your best. It's not in me to tell people, drink only this many liters of water, don't have shower every day, these advices are coming all over the place. No, I shower every day, <laughs> so I'm not going to tell you shower once in three days. <laughs> not if you shower once in three days, I don't want you around me either <laughs> So leaving that aside, in the cities, see the city situation is different, the urban situation is very different. They are thinking of water about how to minimize the use, yes definitely that needs to happen. Because this is a pressure and the water works, the water arrangements that you have in the urban atmosphere. But that's not the real problem, the real problem is ecological. Ecological problem is not just about saving water, ecological problem is about having water where you want. When I say having water where you want, in the last million years, million years ago how much water existed on this planet? Even today the same amount of water exists on the planet except for a few bottles of water that the astronauts took out there and <laughs> you know. They left it on the moon, I believe, some of them, the American astronauts. <laughs> they might have left a couple of liters. Apart from that, everything is here in this atmosphere. It's just not where you want it, that's all. Yes? Water has not gone anywhere, it's in the atmosphere. As you said, you were wading through water in the Chennai golf course, but it's not coming where it has to come <laughs> So water is not where you want it. So we need to look at this, why is it? Where do you want it? 
you want it in the land. You want the aqu aquifers to be full, you want the lakes to be full, you want the rivers to be running. It is not about the water tank on your apartment, that's not the point. That is a city problem, that is an urban problem which needs to be sorted out, where usage has to be minimized, that is fine, we appreciate those concerns. But the most important thing is to ensure the water that comes down in the form of rain, considering India right now, the volume of water that comes down in the form of rain, we are not even holding eighteen to twenty percent of it in the land. When the whole thing was tropical forest, we were holding over seventy percent of it in the land. Today we are holding less than twenty percent of it in the land. That's all the real problem is. So, right now, instead of doing many things, yes, in the city, save water, be conscious about it, recycle whatever you can. Well, you have water harvesting in your apartments and stuff in your buildings, all this is fine, you must do these things. But this is not a real solution, you're just kicking the can for tomorrow. Now, kicking the can for tomorrow I don't like because you think the problems that you create, the next generation should suffer. Hello? I don't like this. Better face it now, this is the reality. The only and only thing, I'm telling you, it doesn't matter, this is not some rocket science. The only and only thing the land needs is, it needs vegetation and it needs animals. That's all it needs. The people will say, check dam. Right now everybody is announcing check dams across streams and rivers. So you need to understand this. All these ideas are coming from Europe and North America, where the variation between summer and full river seasons are just about twenty to twenty-five percent. That means eighty percent to seventy-five to eighty percent, it's always there. In India, between monsoon and summer, the variation is ninety percent. If you build check dams, you will transform a river into a string of pools. Near every town and city, you build a check dam. In the end, what you have is a string of pools. At a temperature which is around over thirty-five degrees, if you stagnate water in thirty days' time, if the water is flowing, it doesn't have so much uh, evaporation. If you stagnate the water in thirty days, the evaporation could be up to fifty-five to sixty percent. So these big dams have been a big disaster. We did these things at one time when we did not know much about this. Now the science of hydrology has evolved in a significant way. Right now everybody knows one third of the land needs to go under shade. This is very important. So for this, we are talking about just Kaveri Basin. Kaveri Basin as a demo that this can be done. If there is determination in the people, this can be done. Once this happens, because it's so lucrative to the farmer, it will spread across the country. Nobody can stop it because it's so lucrative. Right now, India is importing over seventy thousand crores worth of timber and over hundred and twenty crores… I'm sorry, one lakh or hundred and twenty thousand crores worth of timber products. But nobody is allowed to grow timber because if you grow a tree in your land and cut it, somebody will come and arrest you. So nobody wants to grow a tree. Right now, we're bringing loss as a part of Rally for Rivers, we're pushing for loss. In the last term of the government, we got eighteen species released. This time, we're getting all the high-value trees released because if a farmer cannot use the tree, he's not going to grow it, Simp as simple as that. So we're talking about whatever he grows, he can cut it and use it whichever way he wants. Only then he is going, going to grow trees in a massive way across the country because it's economically lucrative. It's an economic plan for him, mm. but has ecological significance. Mm. So right now, if everybody focuses on this one thing, we're… Uh, I don't know how it converts to Australian dollar. You should know, you're visiting yeah. Chennai. It always confuses me, lakhs and… <laughs> <laughs> it costs just forty-two rupees to raise a sapling and give it to a farmer. We are asking for the governments to give some incentives so that they can switch over for the first three to four years to give an incentive. This will make a huge difference both for the farmer and the land. Forty-two rupees per sapling, that's what it costs. But I want you to understand, we need to plant 
2.42 billion trees, that is the number of saplings. First four years we want to raise uh, 730 million saplings. For this preparations are going on all across the Kaveri Basin right now. We have 33 nurseries in Tamil Nadu. The Karnataka nurseries are being built up just now. If this one thing we do, for me, how I am looking at it is, at least we must leave Kaveri the way the previous generation gave it to us. Mm. This much responsibility we must have. Mm.